I'm trying to think of something different to start out with, considering you tell me <laughs> that I always start the same way. Yes. Though it is Friday. There, I, just, I said it. Yes, it is Friday. Anyway, no, I don't remember why I wrote on the ceiling. <laughs> was that when I was trying to figure out where to put the cat tree? No, because we put it over there. Otherwise, it would have been in front of the, like, the TV. I don't know. It's a mystery. He I drew X's on the ceiling for some reason. I don't remember. I didn't even remember until you just asked me. I was like, and I just... <laughs> if you hadn't been here and I noticed them, I would be like... Why did someone draw X's on the ceiling? You used to know why. I don't know anything anymore. We're just getting dogpiled by life. But we're going to get through it. Together. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing well in quarantine. We're, we're getting a little frayed at the edges. Uh -huh. We're getting a little st stuck. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, we don't want to leave the house anyway. Not on a bet. But now that we can't leave the house, we're like... Oh, I feel sick. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're get gonna through. We're gonna do it. Okay, we're well let's this. let's do a wrist check. Okay, time for a wrist check. Do you want me to go first? Sure. Okay, I'm wearing a watch. This is well, basically it's a six two zero six, but it's from before. It's from nineteen sixty three, so it's like a J one three zero something or other is the model number. And I got it for, jeez, I don't remember, but it came in smashed. Somebody smashed the crystal, and then it just sat in someone's drawer. Uh, but I liked the look of it because it's 39 jewels. But what's cool is that six of the jewels in the side of this watch are the ball bearings for the automatic winding weight. Yeah, jeweled bearings. And the strap I found in my box of junk watches, it's old, it's antique, it's actually kind of neatly made, and it's, it was, but it was brand new. It was never worn, so I grabbed it and cleaned it and put it on. Sort of a nice field watchy strap. And you? And me, I'm boring. I just grabbed the first watch I could find. <laughs> ah, there, there, hooray! That's what I'm wearing. We're having a, an enthusiasm gap today. Anyway, I'm always back. I always go back and forth on these kind of old school field straps. They're sort of this 30s, 40s thing. They used to be a lot more popular than they are now, but I don't know if they're they're neat or dated in a bad way or what, but whatever. It was in my box of junk watches. I've never seen it before. You haven't? Nope. It was on a really ugly, like, it was on a really ugly early LCD, but uh, sort of a cheap one, mm -hmm. but it was brand new. But it was interesting. It was when so was the LCD from? Oh, gosh, I'd have to believe it was from the mid-70s, maybe. But it had, like, it was so cheap, it had a fake speaker grill. Normally, they have speaker grills if they're an alarm. This, the, it had the slots, but it was just painted on. <laughs> I wish I saw it. Oh, I can get it out. It's just on the top of that box of crap watches. Anyway, let's get to it. Mark Rosenberg, Oye Gewalt. Yeah, vase mirror. <laughs> It's, um, it's, you know, you just, you, you can't go back, so you have to keep going forward. There's nothing else for it. You just have to keep pushing. What? Nothing. Ella Bay forever. Good to hear the F word, Spencer. I How had... How did you say it? There was the, the, the video when I was making one of the restoration things, I didn't realize that I hadn't turned off the camera and it kept rolling. <laughs> And I think it was around the time that you came downstairs and we were, I was griping about something. I don't know. And I thought I edited it out. I thought I found that part, but then I didn't. Well, now YouTube, I almost said eBay because of the name, is mad at you for dropping the F-bomb. I haven't heard anything yet, but... Well, they don't say things. They just demonetize your... They haven't demonetized it yet, but I'll, I'll, maybe I can go back and look at it. Yeah, I, I don't... I, tr I try not to do that, but it's been... <laughs> it's been a... a it's been a, a, an interesting time. Uh, Sadie is fine. She does her own thing. And Sebastian's an angel, loves his mother. And, and tell, tell them the story about last night. Last night I was like, okay, good night. And he's like, wait. And I was like, what? And he was like, I didn't get huggies or kisses. And I was like, mm. well, didn't you? Didn't he say you forgot something? Yes, he did. You forgot something. Why? <laughs> uh, and then there's Willow, who's just a hellion. We have to lock the fridge because she eats all the food. I don't know, and we can't go anywhere. Anyway, 
So, uh, if some of my frustrations spilled out. Normally, you folks would not be subjected to that, but um, <laughs> I didn't realize the thing was still running, and here we are. <laughs> okay, Ryan Walters. Was Sabrina attacked by a cat around the 58-minute mark of last week's video? Yes. Yes, I was. <laughs> that was Milo, who's never too far away from his, his claws. No. Oh, what did you call him this morning? Uh, I call him all kinds of things every day. <laughs> you fat. Oh, you... You... <laughs> call him like a bottle of fat. I called him a bottle of back fat? No, a fat. Oh. Because <laughs> he's so slow and he forgets what he's doing. So he'll start to walk away from you and then he stops. I'm, when we first got my little long, long time ago, we lived in this little old house in um, Providence, Rhode Island, not too far from Brown, and it had a a, a pre-code, basic pre-building code staircase from the second floor to the first floor. It was far steeper than is allowed today, and it was wood. Um, and I was holding baby Sadie, baby Sadie who was only... But less than a year. Oh, yeah, she was small. She was teeny. And Milo... I'm going down the thing. Milo somehow manages to like insert himself between my feet, like shoving a shoving a carrot into a lawnmower. And I just, I like, I you ripped I, down the railing. I ripped down the railing, ripped it right off the wall. I think that's probably the first time I called him idiot cat. <laughs> He's been trying to kill me since then. And then he does this new thing where he's. <laughs> He stands by the door, the back door, like you're going to let him out, and then he turns around, he goes, and he jumps up to his food. Right, he does this thing where basically he's trying to trick you, so you go to open the door, and he's using that to get your attention, so that then he can turn his head 45 degrees, <laughs> and he's either jumps up himself to the food, or he is asking for help getting up there, even though there's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> Everything is a gosh darn <laughs> crisis with that cat. <sighs> Anyway, Spencer... Cat emergencies. Yes. <laughs> Spencer, do you think that the turtlery issues were done correctly by Seiko since they keep... <laughs> what? What are you laughing about? <laughs> when I said your name the other day. <laughs> when I what? When I said your name the other day. <laughs> oh, how does she know my name? We never call each other by our names ever. And we're just... We're, we're drifting off into this, like... Into this, like, stretch of, like, coronavirus-inspired like, madness. Like, time is irrelevant. I don't, I don't know what day it is. I'm crying because I'm laughing so hard. And uh, he was looking for some shoe on his footy. And I was, I was like, well, there's no Spencer shoes over here. And he was like, how did she know my name? Yeah. Seriously, that was the, that was the feeling. Uh, it's too much. <laughs> or... I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm crying because I'm laughing. Okay, Spencer, do you think that the turtle reissues were done correctly by Seiko since they keep around a decent price point and don't go into the thousands of dollars ridiculousness? Um, I, I guess so. I mean, done correctly, I mean, what was their goal? Uh, I mean, the days of Seiko tool watches are, are kind of over. It was sort of a sort of a glitzy thing. It's sort of a prettier thing. But in its soul, in its heart, it is still basically an SKX 007 with sort of a blobbed up case and sort of a fancier dial. If it were, I have an SKX 77, not an SKX, an SRP 777, the gold black one. Um, I can't remember the last time I wore it. I don't know. I mean, they are what they are. You could use them as a tool watch. So Sure, why not? I wish the loom was flat, but, you know, all the things we complain about, we, old, you know, old school Seiko people who can't change with the times. I was going to say, I'm not complaining about anything. I mean... Right now. <laughs> give it some time. Um, but it's, I mean, it could be used as a tool watch. It doesn't look like these old tool watches. You know, there's, there's a story that I've told before that no one gives a damn about that I'm going to tell anyway, so you can skip forward a minute and a half if you don't care. Um, I used to be a really huge, huge, huge vintage Vespa guy, like old scooters, like 60s and 70s Vespas, um, the ones with the two-stroke motors, and I was really serious about that. Um, I was in a, one of the 
big scooter clubs in San Francisco. I, I founded one, um, it, and they still exist, I believe. But uh, and but then I, I left that one and I joined another big one, whatever. But at a certain point. Vespa had left the United States in the 70s during the Carter administration because of pollution concerns from the two-stroke engine. So we had been we had been cruising all these years on the leftover Vespas from before that time. So all these old two-stroke Vespas that were still here. Well, in the 90s, Vespa Piaggio was said we want to get back into the United States. So, but we're going to do it differently. We're going to come up with a modern design, you know, with a four-stroke engine. And they came to San Francisco and they met with us. We were one of the most biggest, most consequential scooter clubs on the entire West Coast, uh, Secret Society. And so, um, they sat down with us at our weekly Thursday meeting, and it. it Donington Park Bar in San Francisco, and they asked us, and at a certain point, I don't know, we were talking, and I was saying, you know, maybe we're the wrong group of people to ask, because we want the old Vespas, you're talking about these new Vespas, and that's not what we want. We want you to bring the old Vespas back, but that's never going to happen. And they, thankfully, for their sake, didn't listen to us, and they brought back <laughs> the new ones, and they sold a billion of them. So, maybe it's just the same thing, us old folks with... The old things that we like, you know. Don't not... forget your walking stick out, Mr. Old Folk. I'm sitting on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see. But anyway, it's... It may the be... walking stick is in the truck that we're sitting on. It's true. He's not sitting on a stick. I'm not. Though, <laughs> you wouldn't know it by how I behave. <laughs> um, so, maybe that's the same thing. Is that old people, old guys, old collectors, we like the old thing. And Seiko was like, you know what, we don't care what you guys think. If you like that, they're available. Go get one. Here's the new one. So if it suits you, go for it. And the price point is good. And it's a, it's a four-hour movement. Uh, and if they're dialed in, they're great, uh, except for the C-type balance. Uh, and you could wear it and not worry too much. It's a good price point, so why not? Okay. Hang on, you on Oh, someone asked about my thyroid. I have had it checked recently, and my thyroid's not jacked up. She just can't sleep. No. <laughs> so that's my problem. Anyway, James Colburn. Hey, Spencer, I truly enjoy your repair and restoration videos, and I do think I would enjoy them even more if the light source was brighter and more even. We suck at that. The problem is, is that I limp along with whatever I have to hand, and until things are so badly off that they're no longer usable in any way, I'll just keep going along. Yeah, like speaking of lights, so normally we have a light, and we're not using it today. Can you guys tell any difference whatsoever? Right. I don't know. I mean, I need to get. I mean, I need to get a different filming system. I need to get a ceiling mount for a higher quality camera. I need to get better. Um, lighting. I mean, right now I'm using two of those old metal desk lamp things. <laughs> you know, the ones that have the arms God, that go back and forth. Elbow me in the nose. Uh, I should have. I should have. In. I should have nice diffuse lighting that lights up everything. Uh, I don't have that. Yes, it'd be great. My lights suck. Um, I don't know. I just chug along and until I have to change something. Other people live different ways. I don't understand their life, but that's the way it is. Okay. You know, they say, if it ain't broke, fix it. Uh, in the world that I'm from, it's if it's mostly broken, keep going. Fix it with some tape. Fix it with what you have to hand and keep pushing. With giant nails and a wooden chair. <laughs> well, that was grand. I know. Uh, anyway. Uh, okay, he just kept talking about the same thing. Okay, Martin Harrison. The Seiko looks a lot better, though. What's Seiko? I don't know. Read the rest of the question. It's its own beast. Seiko are some of the greatest watches in the world. I get where you're coming from, but, and it's a big but, why copy something that's relatively affordable? Oh, he's talking about that. He's <laughs> talking about the Redune, the Rectangula 6105 homage, knockoff, whatever you want to call it. Rolex aren't affordable for most people, but are desirable, but a homage is always just a pale imitation to the real thing. 
If you desire a Rolex but you can't afford one, then buy a Steinhardt. If you can't afford a Seiko, then buy a Pulsar because at least you're still getting a decent watch. Buy a cheap automatic from China and throw it in the bin after a couple of years because it stops keeping time or broke completely. I don't know if he's supporting I don't know. them or if he's opposed to them. The um, the Redune watches, uh, I mean, they have a 4R in the heart of them. So the heart of them is a Seiko. The case is very well made. Um, if it, if only they had a better clicking bezel system, that's the only like cheap thing I found about them. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things. I, it's I'm with you. I don't like wearing knockoffs. I don't like wearing like when we went to Harbor Freight and we're looking at their their fake Makitas and and fake Milwaukee stuff. It just made me feel itchy. You know, I don't like wearing knockoffs. So that was one of my goals with the Rudune was actually to just use the case and make something else with it. Uh, I've put it back together for now. Um, I'm still thinking about it, though. Still thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, I don't like wearing knockoffs. Mm. But you know, it is what it is. It's a watch. It is a watch. Tim Holton. Oh, man, if Seiko reissued the Mac V slanted number dial watch with modern loom, I would be seriously tempted. Uh, Sorry, where? you're stuck with me. <laughs> I tell you, that would be great. I don't know that people, I don't know though, would people buy a modern reissue of the Mac V SOG? Would they do it? If Seiko reissued it, would they do it correctly? I mean, they could take, they could take the Sarb case. I mean, they have cases that look just like this. All they'd need to do is produce the dial and the correct handset and they could do it. Um, I wonder if they'd sell. That'd be interesting. I mean, I think that they're an objectively attractive design. I think that they're good-looking on their own, history or not. I think they're a good-looking watch. So, who knows? What do you guys think? Would you buy one if you could get one of these for, like, 500 bucks with a modern movement in it? That is one thing, though, that Redune did that Seiko just won't do, is they did the, the crown at 4, not 345. It's a big visual cue for me. So if they could do that, as long as they could do the crown at four, ah, uh, who cares? None of it matters. No. <laughs> nothing matters. Well, if nothing matters, do I continue? Nihilism. Honey, say what you will about the National Socialists, <laughs> at least they had an ethos. <laughs> that's, that's a quote from the Big Lebowski movie. <laughs> Philip Chan. Hi, Spencer. I think it's a 6117 world time, not 6217 on the record cover. Cheers. Uh, you are 100% correct. It is, in fact... You drop the record. What? No, I'm not. It is, in fact, a 6117. You can even see that on the dial it says Seiko 6117. You're correct. I'm wrong. Adam Crockett. What the? What? What are they doing? I don't know. And an anchor holds a boat in a stationary position. What? Yes, it, yes, it does. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> he felt the need to impart that information to us. Yes. Did you mention an anchor? I don't know. We don't know what we say. <laughs> okay. And just so everybody knows, that's <laughs> the deal with the anchor. It holds a boat in a stationary position. You know, we should put that on a t-shirt. Oh, because it, it actually, it's a nautical thing, and that goes yeah. with good for what whales God, did. we went <laughs> all last week without mentioning it. I was so happy. Now you have that look on your face. I'm just imagining it. Tom N. Good enter time of day. Uh, what? Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good enter time of day? It, was it the morning? Is it the afternoon? Is it evening? Oh, I understand. Is I it got midnight? You. Yep. <laughs> Good afternoon. AM, PM, stroke, delete whichever is inappropriate. Sorry, it's a Terry Pratchett thing. Anyway, go for it. Spice on the twitchy bits. <laughs> That's what it. she said. <laughs> Sabrina, have you... Oh, there's the thyroid thing. 
Uh, I was always tired, turned out to be hyperthyroid. Yes, as I said, I got it checked and I'm fine. I'm, I have issues. <laughs> we're, just, we're just beaten by life. Uh, Spencer, thoughtful and interesting conversation as per usual. I knew you were going to play the MK2 card. Yeah, the new Omega with the bright orange highlights. I just don't know it. <clears throat> Mark it, II. Mark II. Mark, that's the word. Beautiful reissue. Your observation that the 60s, 70s era Seikos were every man's watch. Watch it sounds a lot like the rebooted Seiko 5 line. Yes, QC could be better, but hey, there are no Patek Philippe. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. Oh, cool. The Tech Philippe? I don't, I don't know. know. And they do have the 4R ticking inside. I like the look of some myself. Thoughts, as always, appreciated. P.S. Yes, Spencer, the MG stuff is cool. Many of us like car rebuilds. Just look at the success of Ta Taverish and Hoovy's Garage. They both go for the basket cases, too. Uh, yeah, and I have... <clears throat> I've been making sections of MG stuff for about the past six weeks since the last video. And I just, I need to, and it's I have- six weeks? God, isn't it amazing? And I printed out questions about the MG and I just need to open the garage door and sit down and answer the darn questions and put a video together. That's all I need to do. Life is hard. Ennui, <laughs> that's the word for today, ennui. Anyway, go on. Uh, am I on the next question? I don't know. Demits22. Hi there, I have a question about palette stones. So I... Oh, is it the male? There's somebody bicycling. They're wearing purple. No, he's an idiot. Anyway, whenever I hear, see or hear palette stones, I think of literally a palette of stones. Oh, you don't think of a palette? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> We have to get a pallet of, of flagstones if we're going to build that. Yeah, thing we in the went back. from a deck to a patio, but it's not. Then and then we went to nothing, to just sitting in a corner staring at the wall. <laughs> Crying. <laughs> so I've been fiddling with watches, mine mostly, ever since I had an oyster date of mine serviced by Rolex, and it came back newer than when I bought it. To me, it was ruined, so I learned to take care of my watches. It's been over 40 years now, so I can handle most any kind of movement. Funny, I have never had to reset any jewels on a pallet fork. Um, I made a pallet warmer easy enough, but I am not sure what kind of shellac I should use. Do I reuse the existing shellac, or should I get a stick or flake? I dropped an old 6216 that I love, and the entry stone fell off. Well, you know, um, I mean, I've got warmers and shellac and all that stuff as well. I, I cannot remember the last time I really fiddled with a pallet fork, mostly because I think of that as like, real like master watchsmith stuff where you're going and you're dealing with 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 depthing of the stones and all that other kind of stuff and working with shellac and that's if you cannot get a replacement part easily but i mean for most of this other stuff um you can just it it for me everything boils down to labor uh time time is something i don't have a lot of and so if i can i mean i always have the I always have the danger of finding something interesting to do, and the next thing you know, I'm hip deep in a box of parts looking for something. I, I can't do that, and I always have to remind myself that is this re is this whatever this thing is is this really important to do right now? So, I mean, you can certainly do it. I mean, it's it's not hard to do. You have the I have the old school pallet warmers, the little spring-loaded crippy clippy thing, and you heat the one end, and the heat goes through, and it melts the shellac, and you put the new shellac on there, and you do it. Um, but it's, it, from a time perspective, it's just not something that I really attempt. I don't, it just, if I were doing this on my own, and we didn't have any time pressure, then sure, why not? But right now, I just gotta keep pushing. Ooh, I feel dizzy thinking about my workload. I mean, it's, I got a couple jobs done this week. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's go on. Anyway, working on watches is fun. So you told me. Doran Mihai. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. I totally agree and subscribe to your opinion. Well, thank you. Great. <laughs> the watches with black dial go look great on a brown leather strap. I love brown leather straps. I love brown leather straps. Love them. Wow. 
Tell them how you really feel. I just like, you know, brown and black, I just think work nicely together. Uh, there's just something about the combination that really, really works for me. Speaking, the sound is excellent. The new microphone does its job well, all the best. Good, Yay! good, we're glad, excellent. We want you folks to be able to hear us. Yeah, so the next thing is the lighting. If anybody has any, I don't know, make us look more professional. Yeah, I was at Home Depot the other day when I was going out and looking for, what was I trying to buy? A drop light or something? Oh yeah, no, for the car, yeah. Um, and uh, I, was, I was there and I was looking at their stuff and they have high intensity frosted LED um, in, in, in little, the things you put in the ceiling, mm -hmm. whatever those are called. And I mean, I, I could do that. It wouldn't be hard. They do sell them. They weren't terribly expensive. Oh. It's like when I found out you could buy new trash cans. I had no idea. <laughs> there was something else that I made you buy that was common sense and you were like, like a ladder. Oh like, yeah. I was like, well, because my family never throws anything away. So you have multiple generation upon generation of generation of people who bought high quality things 30 years ago, 50, 70, 100 years ago, and the things are still good. So, and I grew up that way, up to and including trash cans. I have trash cans for my grandparents' house because they're made of metal. There's uh, one right there. There's one right there. <laughs> um, and so it never occurred to me that you could just go and buy something new. It, like, it didn't even occur to me that, that they would be made. Uh, can I read now? I guess. R. James, regarding the outer rotating bezel on the 6138-7000, are there any telltale signs to distinguish AM from genuine? What uh, is AM? Uh, aftermarket. Uh, yes, there is. And actually, uh, I meant to talk about that, but I will talk about that now. So we're going to take a break. And okay, I'll so show this is really, really subtle. Very subtle. Aftermarket, original, okay? you look across if you look across the the surface you'll notice that the inside portion is sort of stepped down see that how it has sort of a ridge on the outer one now genuine new old stock doesn't do that it's perfectly smooth perfectly smooth and it's the same angle as it goes out it has a nice curve like this uh, don't mind this the dog was having fun with me um, Whereas this, it's sort of more flat, like this middle, gosh darn it, here, I'll do that. The, the, basically the inner portion seems to be completely flat and it's too low. And then this is just a flat, this is just a flat angle. Whereas Seiko is very, very specific that they wanted one surface and it gently curves. It's a real subtle, elegant difference. Hard to see, but I think the biggest thing you'd notice is that the the surfaces it steps up to the outer ring, and it's not supposed to look like that. Hmm. Anyway, that's all I got. So yeah, it's really subtle, really subtle, but that's the only way. And I don't know how in the world you'd be able to see that on like an auction picture or something, but there is a difference, thankfully. What? The anchor. Honey, <laughs> it says so right here, black and white. An anchor holds a boat in a stationary position. That is the wisdom imparted to us by Adam Crockett. Thank you. <laughs> with, a, with a British flag at the end. Thank you. <laughs> Rule Britannia, anchors hold the boats. <laughs> Humane chowdhury. I am looking for an original 7002-7000 dial that's in a decent condition to replace my mod dial on my watch. Any ideas where I could search for one? Can't find many at the moment. If I could be pointed in the correct direction to look for one, it would be much appreciated. Thank you. The problem with all of those replacement ports, the dial, all that cosmetic stuff, Seiko discontinued that stuff a long, long time ago, and all the spares have long since been eaten up. So a good dial will typically be inside a good watch, but that's not always true. If you, 
the watch collector. He's a seller on eBay. His name is Ramon. He, if, if, if you find his listings, Google Seiko 7002, whatever, and look for, he sells watches in batches, like four or five of them at a time. And it'll be a mix, yeah, every single one of his auctions will be a mix of good, interesting, bad, and some of them are really gems in the rough. They look rough on the outside, but if you look through and look at the dial, now you, his auctions, the way he does them now is it's like 200 bucks for like five watches. So, I mean, that's a pretty big investment, but I mean, you can do that uh, and then pull that dial and then make something out of it. He has one listing, actually, that I keep remembering. He has one listing for 7002, 7001 that has, a, or it's a 7000, and you can see it. I was looking at the listing and I was looking at the watch and it looked filthy, but then I looked at it and I realized it was a tan loom dial and that the loom on the dial and on the hands, the loom looked good. And I'm like, but he, it's like $239, and I'm like, do I really want to spend $239 for a batch of five watches? So I haven't bought it. I believe they're still up. Um, so that's something to do. I always feel, because you sometimes you'll just randomly start talking again, and right when I'm about to read a question, so I have to wait a minute to make sure that you're done talking. What was the thing about girls and teenagers and the, and the new alternative to TikTok and what fathers say? <laughs> no, you're getting multiple things confused. Yeah, well, that is my way. No, but the one that Sadie showed me on TikTok was that this girl had this thing, would you want to make a million dollars by doing something terrible, or would you want to get one dollar for each word that your father says? And she said one dollar for each word that father says. And then she asked some question, and it, she got a million dollars. <laughs> your father wouldn't shut up. <laughs> you know, it's not our fault that we take questions seriously. <laughs> You fell in. I need some tape. Are you wearing underwear? Yay! Yay. They're inside out, but that's a step forward. <laughs> Good job. Okay, Willow, hurry up. Why? Why can we not be in here? Because we're trying to make a video. Yeah. But we like. I like being in here. Sebastian, Sebastian you got to go with Willow. Because she's, okay, you guys are crafting. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> it's my other day. I don't get a minute. How long has this video been going on for I like half an hour? I don't know. <laughs> and Willow gets up before us and she will not go to sleep. She's asleep after us. We actually, after we're in bed, we have to have one ear open, hearing if Willow's trying to escape her room, like just open the door and get out, yeah. to go do some super important Willow thing. There, literally, there's no waking moment where there isn't Willow activity going on. I'm tired. Ooh, a boat. Hey, look at, God, why do people buy big ass boats like that? To pollute? I don't know. It just seems like a waste of time. You take the boat, you have the boat, you put the boat on the trailer, you go to Horse Tooth or wherever, you put the boat in the water, you go around in a circle a few times, you put the boat back on the trailer, <laughs> and you drive it home and you park the boat again. You know, you can accomplish all of that and save a ton of time by just leaving the boat in the backyard. Or not buying the Or boat. not buying one in the first place. You've accomplished everything and saved money. Well, I've been on boats and they're fun. Lester loves watches. Thanks for the fake close-up. I fell prey to this last week, but luckily realized with your help before anyone had bit and bit, bid and pulled it immediately. Yeah, you know, it's tough. They're getting better, but, you know, if you look closely, you the differences are easy to see, but a quick glance makes it hard. Are you done? I guess. Gold Bond 11. Nice to hear some love for hard blacks. I'm with you on that. On the subject of reissues, as well as the Arnie, I would add that the Samurai Save the Ocean they released last year is worth praise. Beautiful attention to detail on the dial and bezel, including flat, neatly applied markers. Hmm. Uh, I haven't looked at the Samurai Save the Ocean. I've looked at some of the other Save the Ocean variants, and they look decent. I haven't looked at the Samurai one, though. I'll have to do that. Daniel Blair, hey Spencer, could you share um, the adaptation 
you did on the Z199 on your 7549. I think that's a great combination. Are those links available somewhere other than your box of end links? Let's break and I'll, I'll show you what I did and I can talk about it. Okay, so as far as I know, Larry doesn't yet make this. I've suggested it a few times for him, but I, I don't know that he ever listened to me or thought it was important. Um, but this was what I imagined. And then I found these in my Endlinks box. This is a, a basically just like a, a tube, a standalone tube for a Jubilee bracelet uh, that I found in there. So it's it's solid on one side, and it's just basically it creates a bar setup, um, kind of like how these bracelets they have they, they're permanently a flat end like this. This is like a standalone piece that can be used to convert this. It's basically sort of an end piece that acts like a bar. And I had to expand them and make them a little bigger uh, and use some custom. I think I had to use the slim, um, the slim spring bars with the fat tips in order to make that work. Uh, Oh, and also because these things were not long enough, I also had to put in my little plastic spacers there. But it works nicely. I've been thinking about that for a long time, and then I finally found this stuff in my boxes of crap, and that's what I ended up doing. Anyway, so as is usual, almost as almost always with every solution I come up with, it's really only applicable for me. And if I had two brain cells to rub together, I would make it generally available so people could buy it and use it for themselves. And, Everybody would be happy, we'd make a little extra money, but no, I do my thing, and then the next thing you know, I've completely forgotten about it. What? I told you. What? Um, she thinks that I have ADD. I do. <laughs> well, I don't know. I have no idea. Squirrel. <laughs> See? <laughs> you did that on purpose. Yes, I did. There is no squirrel. Ever since we cut that tree down, there's no squirrels. Good. Uh, okay, con... Men or MCN? I can't tell. The printer. Where? Right there. Did the printer screw up? Uh, I don't know. Con MCN. Okay. I'm interested to hear your views on micro brand divers. I'm intrigued by some of them. The movements are usually the standard NH35, but some of the designs look interesting. Please consider doing a hands on review of a helm. Venautu? Or a. Kuraburi. I want to call it a kookaburra from Slime Ranchers. I, I looked at them when I first looked at this question. I, I, I couldn't, I had, after I, you first posted this, I went immediately and I looked online to, to look at their models. And between then and this minute, I completely forgot what the watches looked like. Uh, in fact, I forgot almost immediately. They are, um, the helm watches are sort of big and burly and chunky with bright colors. I and thought you forgot. No, well, no, I just remembered. I I managed to actually, my my destroyed brain managed to actually come up with a memory. Um, they're they're interesting. They're attractive. They have they have a a style that is consistent to itself. Like it's recognizable. Like it makes sense. It's a little too big and blinky, and I don't know. I'd have to see one personally. It didn't really grab me personally, but. Like I was saying earlier about reissue Seikos, I might not be the right person to do that. I don't know, I'm in kind of a weird watch neutral zone where I, I, everything is just, we're just spinning like a leaf in the gutter. Yeah, but the neutral zone is at least interesting. I guess, but if you cross into it, the Romulans that, are going to come. That's what makes it interesting, because then there's a fight Again happening. with the Romulans. It's a fake. <laughs> People reference that all the time, you know. I didn't know that. In fact, they can just they can just say it's a fake dot gif dot gif, and everybody knows what they're talking about. Okay. <laughs> Slim, what were some of the issues that you encountered on the rebuild? This is he's asking about the Seiko seven zero one seven sixty fifty speed timer. Um, the issues are the same ones that I'm encountering with the MG with any machine. That was well. That was used hard and left in a wet environment and maintained badly. Is that we've got corrosion, we've got wear and damage to parts from poor quality fixing in the past. Just all these little things, uh, rusted stuff. The 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 train bridge uh, was the incorrect one. The replacement one had a bad uh, had a bad center hole for the fourth wheel section. 
it just it's one of these things and you when you get a you know it's two things imagine the same exact car right an mg just like mine but instead of having been left in the woods for 36 years it was kept by the original owner in his garage for 36 years but covered and dry and also before it sat there for 36 years he maintained it properly that would be you'd be talking two completely separate types of restorations that's it in this case the 7017 while not as bad off as my mg was for sitting in the woods for 36 years it still had some challenges mm. finney's asleep right now i wish i was next to him con mcn are the japan issued 6306 rarer than the 6309 oh yeah i've seen one in reasonable original condition and am tempted to purchase should i expect to pay a bit more for one than a 6309 oh yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah absolutely 6306s go they're much rarer um they were made earlier they were made only for the japan market um they're more or less the same they have more jeweling in the train bridge and they have hacking that's the only difference literally that's the only difference that and the kanji english day wheel but they are um they're definitely rare they're definitely worth more money um whether you think it's valuable or not you want to do that it's up to you whether you think that's a good value proposition cmb the only benefit of the hardened grot is that it protects the watch surface from minor damage this is the um this is for the gentleman's watch his father's watch that had all this stuff on it it was so dirty and baked on that um even go running through the through a, a the, the, running the case and bracelet through a red hot ultrasonic wasn't enough to touch it i had to use um basically dental tools to get the stuff off when i was getting it off it was just like picking like when the when the dentist is going click 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 and finally get something off it was just like that okay Corey bodeker just wondering if you were selling the 6138 pusher seals yet. I just need to make the time to put up the darn listing. I would do it, but I don't know what to say, and I take terrible pictures. That's the problem. I'll do it. I'll do it. I know. <laughs> I've been meaning to do it. It's just, it's just, we're, we're just, we're, we're just, we're bending under the pressure. Other people are more mentally resilient than we are. We're just getting through. I had like this fantasy, in, not even a fantasy, this idea in my head that, oh, I'll be able to get my hair done by July. So it's fine, I don't have to worry. Cause my next appointment was in March, like a week before things were shut down or a week after things were shut down. And um, so I was like, oh, it'll be fine by July. My hair is so long. I haven't had it done since January. Our neighbor had her hairdresser come you yeah, I, I was folding laundry. I walked by the window. I was like, why does she have a towel that looks like the old Japanese flag? And I realized it was a cape, and her hairdresser was cutting her hair in the backyard. Yep. So, I mean, it can happen. You can always write your hairdresser see if she's She moving. only lives across the street. Does she? She lives across Half Hill. I did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I ran into her at Safeway once. Well, why don't you write her and see if she's willing to come for an extra tip? I'm going to set you up in the backyard. No, it's fine. Why? You could get your hair cut. With children swarming. No, 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 no. We, we, would, we would find a place for you to be where that would yeah, not happen. It's fine. I'm going to have hippie hair. It'll be amazing. I wish I had hippie hair. <laughs> Why? Wouldn't that be silly? Yes. Imagine me with Kurt Vile hair. <laughs> it looked great. Slim, Vanilla Coke Zero is incredible. Dang, now I want one. Also, have you ever shown the process of how you jewel an arbor port or center wheel? I am trying to do that on a 6309. I, I haven't shown how to do, how I jewel the, the center, the, the, wait, you mean for the mainspring arbor port? You're asking him, you're asking a, a camera. Uh, how you jewel an arbor port or center wheel? Whether well, two I, different. Did I not? Say no, no, no. That? You, I wasn't listening correctly. That's the problem. Oh, you weren't listening to me. On the center <laughs> wheel, there's nothing to really do. The old jewel comes out, and the new one goes in. Unless you're talking about a seven five four X, in which case you need to use your Zeitz jeweling your reamers to ream out the correct outside diameter, and then you use your reamer to press the jewel into place. Uh, it's the same process with the lower mainspring arbor port. And generally, they're pretty easy to deal with. Um, I haven't ever shown it because it's 
I don't know, I have some tricks, because in the past I've had problems where, because in theory, the Zeitz Reamer is supposed to be self-centering. Like, even if the, the hole is blown out on one side and you've got an oval, it's supposed to stay in the center of that hole. I, I don't really buy that, and I've seen... I've had some bad things happen where the where I wasn't careful and the and the basically the new larger port that I made was moved one way or the other and it 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 messed up how the uh, main the barrel um, was interacting with the center wheel and in certain cases they'll bind. So what I actually do with the one trick I do well one you have to have a Zeitz reamer but secondly in most cases when I'm doing when I'm doing that jeweling. I leave the date dial guard in place, basically the, the stuff on the calendar I leave there because there's a lubrication port for the lower mainspring arbor and it allows you to have a, a reference for where that whole center is and you can use it basically as like a guide. I, I will often do though that make that port through that hole in that date dial guard because um, it'll help me keep things where they need to be. It's especially critical to do this with uh, 6105 or 6117 because the way the plates are around that hole on those two variants is the hole is here and the metal is thick on one side and it's thin on the other. And so if you don't have some kind of training wheels on there when you're reaming that out, it's going to naturally push to the thin side and it's going to push inwards because that's where the thinness is and the you'll get this horrible binding thing in fact i've it's been a while but you always have to be careful uh where actually the bottom is in enough that the that the that the barrel tips up and the teeth are hitting the underneath of the center wheel cock and it's 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 a real you've got to be careful and so that's i mean i don't know that it's the right way to do it it's what works for me as with everything i do I, for the most part, have figured out a way to do it, but that doesn't mean it's the right way to do it. In fact, I have to assume that pretty much everything I do is probably the wrong way to do it. Mommy. Uh-oh. I want to show you. What, what? That you have you have something on your chin? Mm -hmm. Oh, because you... What? Did, did you, you brush your did teeth? Did you brush your teeth? Mm -hmm. wow. Oh, wow. So that's toothpaste. Uh, there was a tooth bite in my... in there. Oh, okay. But then I, and then, and then I had a great idea. What great idea did you have? I, I had the orange thing, and then I was putting it in my teeth. Okay, whatever the orange thing is, he was putting it in his teeth. I think you should go see Sadie. I think she's go see, playing that go video see, game. Go see Sadie. She's playing that video game you like. Go see Sadie. What kind of video? Game? I don't know. Go see. The one with executions. Oh yeah. <laughs> In yeah. Sadie's room. You just go in there. Don't even knock. Just go in. <laughs> Fart. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, were you done? You were talking about your brain not working or something. Brain doesn't work. doesn't work at all. Like yeah, how no. you don't remember why there are X's on the ceiling? I still don't. Uh, anyway, okay, go for it. Okay, Olivier Perrault. 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 Okay. Olivier Perrault. Great video. Wondering if you can help me locate the ball and spring for my bezel on a Seiko 6159-7000. No more clicking sound. Okay, so the way that those work is there is no spring. In the case where the ball goes, it's just a little depression, a little hole, and the ball bearing goes in there. What makes the clicking is the spring of the bezel, because as you turn the bezel, the bezel has to go over that ball that's held in place just sitting in a hole with part of it sticking out and the bezel goes up and down so it goes click 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 i'm exaggerating but that's how it works so you can get a suitable ball bearing out of basically the tip of any ballpoint pen now they're made of tungsten and they're a lot harder than the 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 rotating ring so you want to be careful about really going around a whole bunch and turning that all the time because you could put some wear on the bottom of your bezel but i mean how often do we use the dive bezel on a 6159 but that's what you do i have found in the past that though it is rare and hard and difficult to get it to where it will click smoothly all the way around because you're 
you're looking, you're asking an asymmetric wire spring retainer to give symmetrical hold 100% of the time around. Um, and you have to, sometimes you have to fool with the spring and make sure that it's completely flat and that it's doing right. Even then, it's, it's, it's a less than perfect system. There's a reason Seiko stopped using it, like, oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Well, yeah, because then they went to the, the standard rotating ring. We, even with the 6105-8000, well, that one doesn't click. But then the 8110, it does, but everything is held in place, not by springs, but by interlocking ridges and uh, a rotating ring gasket so that, the, so that the, the, the bezel, the rotating ring is held flat to the case and the ball goes up and down, which gives you a more consistent result. The first, the 6150 system, frankly, is just a stupid system. Okay. Randy Allen. Hi, guys. Hope you had a good week. Yes. Well, we had a week. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, because it's Friday again. Yes. I feel like we just made the last video, and then we're making another video. We can make another video right after this if you want. Okay. Let's just do it. <laughs> I enjoyed all the repair videos you published this week, and I really like the part two video on the Redune watch. I had one question though. It wasn't clear if the Redune case would take bracelet straps made for a Seiko 6105 case like say the Uncle Seiko President bracelet. Yes, I ordered one from WR Watches and am waiting with bated breath to receive it. For anyone else considering the purchase, they told me that there was a problem with the black dials and for production was on hold for a new batch of black dials. I changed the gold dial one which is available. Um, the only thing I would say the 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 external um, the external dimensions of the case, like the lug width and depth and curve, exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the location of the holes for the spring bar. I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll work. Maybe they're not. Um, but it's funny, by the way, talking about them reworking the black dials. A number of people have been sending me their communications with. WR watches about this. Uh, uh, apparently, what? You have to clean my face. Say you said so. it's clean. Your face is clean. They told me this. There's toothpaste on it. No, no you're, you're not anymore. You look fine. You look good. Tell her it's clean. No, you're fine. Go back Go. in there. Go. Go. Oh. You're fine because you're your busy. face is clean and we're busy. Um, a number of people sent me this stuff. Redune, it was never my intention it, it, to boost Redune, but apparently they've completely sold out of that 6105-8000. Like, they don't have any left. Um, some people who've sent me communications, they've also talked about the fact that the Black Dials had some QC issue. I don't know what the QC issue was. Uh, Redune has never communicated with me about anything. Um, they've apparently made a big boost in sales off my video, but that was not my intention. Um, I'd be curious to see what they're changing about the dial. Um, so if anybody knows what they're changing, let me know. But anyway, back to the bracelet question. I haven't tried it. I don't know the answer, but I will tell you that the, where the, the location for the holes for the spring bar, it's different. So that could be a, could be a change. Home stretch. I know, last question, and it's a fun one. Andrew Werner, hi guys, a while ago a dude asked some random quick fire questions in the comments section. I thought I'd pick up where he left off if you don't mind and ask some more. That was um that was Mr. Duffy of the Sandwich no, Time it channel. Wasn't. It wasn't? No. He's asked us these rapid fire questions before. Who was it? I don't remember, but it wasn't Mr. Duffy. It wasn't Mr. Duffy. Anyway, Mr. Duffy, if you're watching this, we hope you're doing well. Uh, hi. With, with your I, we hope your health is improving and things are good. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Uh, as ready as I'll ever be. 1980s or 1990s? Honestly, 19... It depends what we're talking about. I'm a millennial, so what do you think I'm going to say? <laughs> you see, my 1990s were different than pretty much everyone else's 1990s, because my 1990s were spent in San Francisco doing all kinds of stuff, and I had a lot of fun, and I was an adult, and I was on my own, and scooters and surfing and all kinds of things. A lot of bad things happen too, but that's normal. Um, I watched cartoons and played video games. Let me put it this way. If 
if I had no choice but to be sent back in time, nobody was asking me, and I had to choose between the 80s or the 90s, I would go to the 90s. But if you had to make a choice between the two, then someone asked you which one you wanted. Well, no, I didn't have a choice to go or not go. Oh. I was gonna go. Like, like, like the, like the, like the, the, you know, the portal of yesterday or whatever the heck it is. You're gonna go back. There's no, but they're gonna give you a choice. I mean, I wouldn't want to go back to the 80s. No, lots of not fun things happened in the 80s. A lot of not fun things happened in the 90s, but the 90s were better than the 80s. Uh -huh. <sighs> yeah, definitely, 90s. I was alive for three years of the 80s, so I can't speak to Better TV. I mean, DS9 was 90s. Uh -huh. There you go. 6138 or 6139? 6138, hand winding, more... Is that the panda? Yeah. Okay, then that. Yes. Spock or Riker? Spock. Spock, but I have a soft spot for Riker. What? Every time I look at him, it's like, where is he hiding? He's, you know he's holding a giant sausage and a block of cheese somewhere. He's got them behind his back. He's waiting God, for the cameras awful. to stop. Oh, you stop? And in the last one they show him, he's eating, he's making pizza. So what? Get over yourself. No. <laughs> Omega or Rolex? Omega. All right, you're asking me. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, you know, I have to say, really, value for money and quality, it's got to be Omega. Because Rolex is, Rolex is fine, but it's vastly overvalued for what it is. Whereas Omega is, especially vintage Omega, it's really, really nice stuff. Like, I mean, Omega has always been high, high quality. And, but they just, they don't have the same value mismatch as, a, as Rolex does. Makes it more wearable and accessible. Ford or GM? Ford. I don't care. But Ford. You didn't get a Ford truck. No, I did not get a Ford truck. I got a GMC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, be, I don't act. I mean, the only. I mean, I owned a 68 Dodge at a certain point. I, I also owned a 56 DeSoto. But beyond that, it was all Fords. There was you my had six, a Volvo. Oh, well, that's, I, that's because we got it for free <laughs> from somebody. Um, but I mean, I had a 59 Ford Thunderbird, a 60 Ford Thunderbird, 62 Ford Fairlane. A Geo. Oh, well, the Geo, that was a purchase out of necessity. <laughs> Had to get that. that was, there were no choices. Um, and then VWs, but yeah, I mean, I've always been, I mean, my dad had a Ford van. Uh, and so, I mean, Ford is what my instinctive thing is. But I was looking, we were, Sebastian and I were looking at trucks this morning over breakfast, and there's somebody local who was selling a 53 Oldsmobile Rocket 88. And I was like, completely original barn find. And I was like... That's a pretty cool car, but it's four doors, so. You didn't mention MG. MGs are very cool. <laughs> I have one in the garage. Are you sure? Yep, okay. I do. Well, I have parts of one in the garage. <laughs> okay, the next one's for me, not you. Beer or wine? It depends on my mood, and I think if I was drinking either, I would have beer right now. Yeah, but these days, she's a gin and tonic girl. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, so what specifically, what gin and tonic, how do you do your gin and tonics? I don't know. No, well, what's the brands? I had, I don't remember what it's called, Beef Eater or something? Really? No, yeah. no. No, you, the one I got from Costco, I don't even know what it's called. It just, no, you had Gordon's. No, I didn't. No, you didn't? No, you had, what's the name of your gin? I don't know. No, it's the, a good gin. Yeah, well, you know, you went to some gin thing in the 90s about it. You told me it was good, and I was like, okay, I guess I'll buy that. I don't remember. And then she's got some sort of artisanal uh, tonic, tonic. <laughs> and then slices of fresh lime. It's quarantine. <laughs> anyway, Italian or Mexican? Mexican. We were yeah. going to oh, go Mex out to a Mexican restaurant, and then Corona started spiking in our county, and now we're not going out. Yeah, I mean, Italian is Italian, and maybe if we were like in you know, Tuscany and had like real, like real Italian food that with all the no, variety. No, even if we were in New York, I'd be like down because obviously there isn't Mexican food there that's right. worth eating. I mean, but I grew up with Mexican food and, you know, it's just like, imagine if we could go to that taco place downtown. I would love to, but we can't. I know. 
I know, I would love to too. Gosh, the last time I was there, which was before, right before coronavirus happened, we were sitting there, Sadie was babysitting, and so she and I went out to lunch, and it was like, we were sitting there, and I was like, this is so good. This is like a watered down version of our distress of being stuck in the house. That's it. <laughs> nothing else going on. No, nothing. I don't know what hideous disasters of flaming horror await us over this weekend, but if nothing, I Nothing, because nothing happens. But if I can find or slash make the time, I will finish the MG video. You'll put up those gaskets. I'll put up the gaskets. And I don't know, we'll just chug through and everybody's going to get through it. I hope you all are doing well. Please don't be... Be more resilient than we are. Do the breathing trick that she won't do. I don't do. <laughs> Got to breathe in for five, hold for five, breathe out slowly for five. I can't deal with it. It's been, I feel it's, stupid. It's been medically shown to, to, to decrease stress. Well, that's stress. fine, but I'm allowed to think it's stupid. Okay. Folks, you have a great weekend. And wear your mask. And wear your mask. A real mask, not one of the fake masks. I mean, if you're going to go so far as to wear, like, a fake mask because you want to troll the libs, just wear a mask. Or be like that Karen we saw that had a mesh feminine mask. It's just, I mean, you're like a... You're like a, a, a those people that do that, they're like chilled kids that when you tell them to brush their teeth, they go like this. <laughs> it's a willow. Yeah, willow. <laughs> Don't be a willow. Goodbye. <laughs>